My name is Gianfranco Guidati, and uh, today we will speak about heat pumps. Now, I think we all know that heat pumps play uh, a decisive role in the decarbonization of our energy sector, uh, but people think when they talk heat pumps, they think about uh, buildings for, for heating purposes and so on. But heat pumps have also something to, um, uh, a contribution to make an important contribution in the industry sector. So our talk today is about industrial heat pumps, research and market. And we have the most qualified speaker for this, Gordon Arpa Gauss from uh, the Fachhochschule uh, Ost in Books. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Gianfranco, for the kind introduction. Um, so as uh, Gianfranco said, I'm Cordin. I'm working in the group of Stefan Berch at the uh, Fachhochschule Ostschweiz. The talk is uh, structured like this. First, I'll give you an introduction into the market. I speak about heat pump technologies. I give you a, a research update and we see several application examples. As a core message for the industrial partner, so you will find out what technologies are available and what to consider when selecting an industrial heat pump. Uh, as a researcher, I hope you get um, a take home message. So where OST, uh, our institute is working on the, in, in this topic and how to implement heat pump technologies. First of all, let's have a look at the energy consumption in Switzerland. Um, about 19% of the total energy use goes to the industry. And from this, about 54% into process heat. So this is a substantial amount which requires a lot of fossil fuels. And that's a major motivation to decarbonize this sector. Industrial heat pumps can be defined as follows. This is a definition according to the Annex 48 project. A heat pump with more than 100 kilowatts of heating capacity applied to industrial processes, but also used uh, in district heating and for large residential buildings. Uh, we will focus mainly on vapor compression heat pumps. They are driven by electricity uh, so a compressor is compressing a refrigerant from a low pressure to a high pressure. Uh, at the low pressure, the refrigerant takes up some energy from the environment, for example, waste heat from the industry. And on the high pressure side, uh, a condenser uh, will dissipate the heat from the refrig hot refrigerant to, to generate process heat. The refrigerant is then in a liquid state after the condenser and is expanded back to a low pressure. Uh, and then so the circle continues, goes to the evaporator again and so on. An important uh, parameter in this whole uh, concept is the coefficient of performance uh, shown here. So it's the useful heat or in this case the process heat divided by the electricity consumption from the compressor. When you go to industry, so we have an industrial company, uh, has a, a quite a lot of primary energy consumption, usually gas, oil, biomass, coal. And with this energy, it uh, produces uh, some products, uh, has several industrial processes, for example, here, distillation or drying, evaporation, pasteurization. During these processes, there are some waste heats produced, for example, exhaust air from ovens, waste heat um, from compressed air or wastewater, cooling water. And this waste heat <clears throat> at low temperature can be used as a useful heat as a heat source for an industrial heat pump, and it converts it back to useful process heat at a higher temperature. So the primary energy is somehow shifted from fossil fuel based uh, energy to uh, hopefully um, renewable electricity. And here again, we have the heat pump efficiency uh, as, uh, as shown here with the COP factor. And an advantage of such a heat pump is that it's very efficient, so energy efficient. When we look at the temperature ranges and we can classify the heat pumps according to the source temperature and the supply temperature. And there are heat pumps 
here, which are like con conventional heat pumps providing up to maybe 80 degrees Celsius uh, from a heat source of 20 or 40 degrees. Then we go higher, then we reach the area of, let's say, high temperature heat pumps, which go up to 100 degrees supply temperature, and then very high temperature heat pumps, which are uh, in this high, even higher region. Um, when we look at the sales statistics in Switzerland, and when we compare heat pumps to oil and gas boilers, we can see that the units uh, at the low uh, capacity range um, are between, for example, here 5 to 13 kilowatts. There we have many, many heat pumps. So these are the residential sector, the single family houses. Um, and then when we go to higher capacity, the, the oil and gas boilers are more units. Now this can be converted to the heating capacity. So multiplying the units by the, the heating capacity. And so then we can see that at the higher capacity, there are many, much more oil and gas um, used. So this is dominating. And so here we can uh, really see the potential for decarbonization of the Swiss industry. Another important uh, parameter is uh, the price ratio uh, between the electricity and gas. And this is somehow um, illustrating the market at attractiveness of, of a heat pump. And so we have here Europe with uh, different countries and um, in color, the price ratio. And here we can see in the Scandinavian countries, the ratio is uh, low or let's say around one or a little bit higher than one. So electricity is, uh, is very much in favor. So here we will expect um, quite a lot of heat pump installations. But then there are other countries where the gas is very cheap and, and therefore the price ratio high. And so heat pumps have have a hard uh, hard time to be implemented to be economic economically um, feasible. So there are some challenges uh, for the further spread of industrial heat pumps. First of all, a low level of awareness uh, between several stakeholders in this whole value chain. So this uh, um, that's the reason we we want to make presentations and inform. Uh, the audience about this technology. Also, how to integrate uh, a heat pump in industrial processes in a retrofit situation, for example. The challenges in the size of the heat pump. Some heat pumps are, let's say, factory made, so we can have a, a benefit from economy of scale in the production. But uh, many heat pumps in large scale are unique heat pumps and tailor made. So it needs some engineers uh, which uh, integrate these uh, systems. Then the amortization periods are typically longer than a gas boiler. That's also an effect of the price ratio. And we have other technologies for heating, like other renewable energies, uh, for example, biomass, biogas, or solar thermal. Then there are uh, typically requirements for heat storage because a uh, heat pump usually likes to run uh, continuously and so um, but uh, it has to fit the, the heat demand on the industrial uh, process and there is also a challenge in the components of a heat pump so the core component is the compressor and they have to be let's say uh, high temperature stable and there is some um, um, research needed here and also the refrigerant which is the working fluid uh, there are some new ones which will be um, used in, in the market in the future here we have a picture um, or several heat pump systems uh, i don't want to go into too much detail but um, you can see there are several manufacturers and from different countries uh, starting from Japan, then to Norway, Austria, Germany, UK, and so on. Then the, the systems are typically a little bit larger than in a house. So, the, so they are installed in a machine room, uh, several meters uh, size. 
but you can also see that the heat pump cycle, so the, the internal design can vary depending on the heat pump type. So there are the different refrigerants used and also different cycle designs. Uh, on that slide are some other um, brands and producers uh, from Austria, for example, also in Switzerland, uh, Friotherm, which uh, produces very large heat pumps, then from Finland, uh, Denmark, and Japan again. So if you are more interested in the exact uh, details of these systems, we can uh, uh, discuss this maybe in another presentation. And uh, what we put uh, is the, the heat pumps in one graph. So it shows the, the heat supply temperature here on the left from these products as a function of the heating capacity. This is a, in a logarithmic scale. So 1000 kilowatts, uh, one megawatt is here, 100 kilowatts here. And the colors are uh, the, the compressor types which are used in these systems. So the first three or the the top three products um, are shown here. So it's uh, the one from Kobelco. It's a Japanese um, product producing steam up to 165 degrees. Uh, then we have uh, the heat booster from Viking. Uh, the company has changed the name, uh, but uh, it's using uh, a hydrofluor olefin refrigerant and also reaches 160 degrees. And then we have Oxner, Oxner heat pumps from Aus Austria, which also reach high temperatures at 130 degrees. And then there are others. You can see that they go into 10 megawatt scale uh, using turbo machinery or screw compressors. Uh, an important um, factor is the refrigerant. So the working fluid, which is uh, evaporated and condensed in these heat pumps. And there are some which need to be replaced in the future because they, if they leak out, they would produce a larger global warming potential, global warming. And so there are some alternative refrigerants which, uh, which are researched and used. For example, uh, this uh, hy hydrofluor olefins, um, but you also can see here uh, CO2, uh, then some others, uh, HFOs, then ammonia, ammonia up to maybe 90 degrees. It's very much used. When you look at the costs, we have the specific investment costs here in euros per kilowatt heating capacity. And it typically shows this curve. So you can expect a 500 kilowatt heat pump at around 500 euros uh, per kilowatt. The COPs, the coefficient of performance, um, is shown here as a function of the temperature lift, which is the temperature difference between the source, heat source, and the heat sink. And we can expect the COP of four uh, at around 50 Kelvin or uh, lift. So these are measurements uh, from field data. And uh, so a COP of four or three in this range uh, seems also to be economical feasible. Then there are some large scale heat pumps um, which have a heating capacity lar larger than one megawatt. And um, so I can name here the companies. So, so Turboden, from, Turboden from Italy, MAN from Switzerland, Mitsubishi, Siemens, Oxner, Kobelco. And there are also maybe some others which um, yeah, uh, may be missed. And it's interesting to see how this market is developing quite fast. Um, so they have different refrigerants. Here, uh, hydrocarbon, pentane, then CO2, water, okay, steam, water steam, then uh, butane, hyd hydrofluorolefins, um, and so on. The heating capacities can be increased by cascading the heat pump. For example, here, the Cobelco can be cascaded up to four units, and so they can reach also 2.5 megawatts. Uh, that's one um, strategy to increase the capacity. 
Um, the temperatures they can reach are shown here. So up to 170, 74, 150. So they are able to produce also steam, not only hot water or pressurized water. So steam generating heat pumps, it's a very attractive research area. And it seems that many research institutes are going into this direction. And we at OST also, we are quite uh, uh, going into this direction. So the publications increase over time. So, but there is a lack uh, of steam compressors, especially at small scale so that we could make a demonstrator unit in our lab, especially for heat pumps. Um, so Kobelco uh, from Japan, they have uh, such a heat pump already on the market uh, since about 10 years, but they do not export to Europe, but would be probably interested to extend their market distribution or sales network. What they have is a, a heat pump cycle with a screw compressor. They have a flash tank where the low pressure steam uh, is fed in and then uh, the saturated steam is recompressed to higher pressure with a second or third compressor. That's a very efficient system. Uh, Mitsubishi, for example, has this cycle. It uses uh, butane, isobutane, and then have also a second uh, cycle on top with the water, uh, with a soup cooler or a second condenser, uh, and also recompressing the steam to higher pressures. Uh, it uses a water injection to cool the hot uh, vapor steam between the compression stages. So this is a, a typical cycle, which is commercialized. Um, they, this, so how to generate steam? This can be visualized in the pressure enthalpy diagram of water quite uh, nicely. So we have water here at one pressure, uh, one bar, um, so normal feed water. What we could do is uh, compress it with a pump to higher pressure and then evaporate and reach the steam. So that's a typical uh, system here. We have a waste heat, maybe also for, for preheating, then the pump, a tank, and generate steam by the help of a, a gas-fired boiler or electrical heating or even a, a high temperature heat pump. Another system uh, which is more efficient is to decrease the pressure of the water by a valve first, then go into a tank, use energy to evaporate the water at, at a, let's say a vacuum or low pressure um, below one bar, uh, yeah, and then recompress it uh, with three stages to steam. Um, when we go to use this uh, system, then uh, we, we have vapor recompression and use the waste heat, uh, then we can achieve very high efficiency. And this uh, is shown here. So if you compare, for example, a natural gas boiler, which uh, needs this amount of energy with the vapor recompression, we are four times more efficient. Or when you look at the CO2 emissions, it's also a factor of 20, uh, sorry, uh, much lower. So those are interesting uh, cycles. Um, and here I have a slide uh, showing heat pump technologies for large temperature glides. So what does it mean? We have, for example, a situation to heat up uh, a stream from a lower temperature to a higher temperature, uh, maybe 40, 50 degrees. For such applications, there are special heat pump technologies which can be used. The first one is shown here, a subcritical cycle with a subcooler. Here, the condenser stage is somehow split into two stages. That's a possibility. Then we have, for example, a two-stage two -stage extraction cycle. So here, uh, the water comes in here into an intermediate uh, heat exchanger, and then a second one, which also provides a large temperature difference or a large, large temperature glide. Then, uh, sorry, then we have the two parallel subcritical cycles. So two heat pumps in parallel. 
or we have a reversed Brighton cycle used in the rotational heat pump from ECOP from Austria. They have um, a totally um, gas phase cycle with a uh, noble gas. That's also a possibility to produce hot air or to produce hot water. Then there are transcritical CO2 cycle, which have um, these characteristics uh, totally in the gas as uh, in the supercritical phase with gas coolers, maybe one or two gas coolers to split this whole temperature difference. Then we have other transcritical cycles for hydrocarbons, HFOs, which are interesting to look at. Then hybrid heat pump with ammonia and uh, water. So it's uh, splitting the condensed and, and ever desorbed. So it's absorption, absorption, desorption process. Um, yeah, provides this glide or refrigerant mixtures. So we could also have a working fluid, not only a pure one, a pure fluid, but some mixtures which provide special uh, thermodynamic properties. Um, so transcritical cycles um, are interesting to look at, especially to reach higher temperatures up to maybe 200 degrees. And then we have very large um, temperature glides on the heat sink side. So we also have the evaporation. Uh, so it's a, pre a temperature entropy diagram. Then we compress uh, the gas to higher pressure. And then it's not a gas uh, condensation, but a gas cooler. Uh, and then expansion back to the lower pressure. Um, when you look here at CO2, which is um, very much discussed and used, um, we have this situation. We have we have a critical point of CO2 of 31 degrees. So the heat source has to be lower than that. Then it works. Then we can compress it to higher temperature, maybe 80, 130 degrees and cool it down. When you use butane in a transcritical cycle, then we are, for example, more flexible in the waste heat or in the source temperature. That would be more interesting for industrial applications where the waste heat is at such temperature levels. And then here we reach 150, 200 degrees. So this could be, for example, used to produce hot air from flue gas. Um, Okay, but there are other uh, refrigerants also where, where, where we could run it in a, in a transcritical cycle. Um, but the message here is that quite high COPs of around three can be reached depending on the cycle and the transcritical conditions. Uh, but some research is still needed in this direction. When we come to OST, so our institute, uh, we are working on helping industry, uh, especially for integration of industrial heat pumps in their processes. We look at case studies of successful applications. We will uh, have projects for demonstration of steam generating heat pumps. We are testing some refrigerants at high temperature with some lab units. And we also um, try to optimize the heat pump technologies to fit the temperature demands. So we have in our lab a steam generating heat pump, uh, which is producing steam at 115 degrees. It was a project uh, to prove the concept. So you have a flash tank, uh, the water is uh, evaporated here and then recompressed with, uh, with the compressor uh, to reach steam uh, state, low pressure steam. Then we have a heat pump producing 150 degrees and we tested several refrigerants which are synthetic, so hydrofluorolefins with these numbers here. Uh, and they, they will be used in industry uh, for, for such uh, yeah, large scale heat pumps. Um, what they are, they are low uh, global warming potential and uh, not flammable, not toxic. So quite uh, interesting uh, refrigerants. Um, then we help with integration. So what is needed to be considered when integrating a heat pump? So first of all, is 
uh, what processes are needed, uh, which uh, have he heat demand, what, what processes has cooling demand, what is the supply temperature, is there sufficient energy available, um, is it also in the same order of magnitude from heat source and heat sink, um, what, is it also available at the same time, or is a storage needed, uh, so what is the heat recovery potential and operating profiles, so part load fluctuations, these are major questions which need to be discussed. And uh, a very good tool to analyze um, such a situation are, is pinch analysis. And so here is an example from uh, Donald Olsen from HSLU, uh, who, who uh, investigated um, a candy production in the food industry. And what is first needed is to have uh, the composite curves so um, from, from these processes. And then we can see what is the cold utility and hot utility and the heat recovery potential. And also where is the pinch temperature. And when you go to that graph, we see the pinch temperature here in this example around 40 degrees. Then you can see if a heat pump could be a, um, a technology to integrate. And if then the evaporator has to be at the lower temperature than the pinch and the condenser at the, high, at the higher temperature. So integrating over the pinch. And when we do that, we can see that the heat recovery um, pot potential could be in, in, increased very much and the hot utility is reduced. So that's just an example, but thinking steps, how to integrate a heat pump. Now, uh, some applications. Uh, we looked at uh, applications in Switzerland and summarized several in a, in a report from SFOE, which is available here uh, for download. So we looked at 25 uh, case studies of industrial heat pumps at several places uh, in Switzerland. Here is a, a map with the locations of these uh, heat pumps. Uh, so they were, um, let's say, uh, um, open to share their data with us. So it's not, let's say, representative for Switzerland. Uh, I'm sure in, in Ticino there are also heat pumps and in, in Canton Val Valleys and so on. But anyway, in this report, we analyzed 25 case studies of industrial heat pumps. So here is the list. Uh, they are in different sectors, mainly food, for example, uh, producing hot water and so on for heating purposes. And you see the temperatures which uh, were there uh, for the source, the blue and the, the heat sink, the red ones. Uh, the highest was around 95 degrees in a in, a, in, in Landi to pro produce hot water for, for cleaning uh, uh, wine bottles and so on. And you can also see the integration level. So the process level or plant level or network like district heating. So that, that would be some criteria, criteria to, you know, to analyze uh, case studies. The capacities of the heat pumps were here in several one hundreds of, uh, of uh, kilowatts uh, for the district heating, they are already megawatt scale. Okay, so we also uh, analyzed the energy savings and the CO2 emissions reduction. And as a rule of thumb, we can say that around 20 to 80% energy savings are reached and CO2 emissions 30 to 90% can be reduced. And uh, this is a table showing uh, some information of these case studies uh, where you see the, the, how, how much gas or fossil, uh, I mean, uh, oil uh, was mm, yeah, reduced by integration of the heat pump and the CO2 emission reductions. So if you are interested, we can discuss this later on or more. And what we also do uh, are detailed analysis of operating data of some selected industrial heat pumps. So we have a project from SFOE where we can investigate three case studies in more detail. 
One is, uh, I mentioned Landi in Schaffhausen, cleaning bottles wine, of wine tanks. Um, they need a hot, or they have a hot water supply by a heat pump, and they have more than three years of operating data uh, where we can analyze the performance of this uh, Oxner um, heat pump. Um, then we have Resilux, they are the producers of the PET blanks. So the PET recycling uh, is go all, all PET uh, from Migro and Coop go there and they uh, melt it to PET blanks. They need uh, hot uh, water and have extr extrusion uh, processes to produce these PET blanks. So they have also two heat pumps from Viking, the ones which provide very high temperatures. And we have opportunity to analyze these data of these units uh, during the next year. Then also Bachem, a biotech company producing, for example, peptides. They have their heat pumps uh, for refrigeration and also for heating purposes. Uh, with ammonia and also there we have uh, opportunity to analyze the data. So this will be also useful uh, examples to see if there are some multiplication potential of heat pumps in Switzerland. So I'm come to, my, to the end of my talk. I'd like to summarize. So you have seen that there are several applications for industrial heat pumps uh, producing hot water, hot air, or steam. There are numerous, uh, numerous products from various manufacturers on the market. So it's uh, there. So it, the, the technology is there. So now it's about integration and techno economical analysis of, of these uh, situations. The COP uh, is around four at 50 Kelvin temperature lift. So that, that can be expected uh, from field uh, test data, but depends on the temperature conditions. Um, then we have seen several heat pump cycles and technologies. So some cycles are very useful to reach large temperature glides. Then there are other cycles which are suited for steam generation. And then there are also some cycles which are used for very large heat pumps in the megawatt range. So the heat pump integration is a task for engineers and needs some experience. And so it's also case by case, uh, depends on that. And there is quite a high research activity worldwide in many countries, especially here also in, in Korea, Japan, in China, but uh, for sure also in, in Europe. And when we look at the refrigerants, so there is a trend towards natural refrigerants. So these are CO2, uh, water, but also hydrocarbons like butane or pentane, uh, and also for sure ammonia, and synthetic uh, HFO refrigerants, which have low global warming potential. So this is the last slide. Um, yeah, we have several references. Also here the book uh, Gianfranco mentioned, and also um, a white paper where we were contributing uh, to strengthen industrial heat pumps in industry. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Cordin. Thanks a lot for this excellent overview.